And the challenge on the planet today is there's progress in some areas and the lack of progress in others, which leads to problems for people, humans, just like you and I. And largely what we found is education is that, um, that solution. This seems like a very good place to start scaling education. If we can share this information with a lot of people and allow them to start working together, they can do something that's never been seen before and really create another renaissance, which would be beautiful for humanity. And it will be based on education. It won't just be based on the educational efforts we're making, but on many people's educational efforts, including India's own. So what we're doing is we've invested in systems, technology that we're developing that allows us to go into areas and deliver education for a fraction of the cost with some of the best minds. It's an effort to, to teach them how to fish, per se. Rather than just coming in and doing the procedure for them, we believe strongly in the ability to come in and teach in a way that they can retain that information and then go on to bless the lives of their families as well as their patients and their patients' families. We've basically created online education meets hands-on education. It would be like getting a hands-on lesson with Picasso, and that can be delivered in, into any house. And as you're painting, you can see that your hand strokes are actually not quite in line with how he was working. So you get these mental models to have the models of Picasso. Who doesn't want that? That's the kind of shift we're making right now. So not only do we teach them in a lecture hall, we then take them to a virtual reality environment and we've brought that equipment in with us here to India that then allows us to teach and uh, allows them to learn almost on a hands-on approach the procedures that we are teaching them or lecturing to them on. So what we've created is a virtual system where you have a virtual patient that doesn't cost you to work on that patient. So it gives them a chance to be able to not only see the concepts, be able to apply it hands-on, which is really helpful for people that are learning and haven't had any opportunities opportunities to really try these things out. They'll incise the tissue with a scalpel. It'll be bleeding. They'll have to stop the bleeding. In that bleeding, they'll drill into the bone. They'll have different sizes they need to pile it into the bone and then different widening drills. Then they'll place the dental implant. All that technical stuff, they can have played out in front of them as many times as they want. From the student's point of view, it gives you a whole new perspective to this particular aspect of dentistry. Because you actually are applying your mind and when you are choosing incorrect size of the implant, it is rejecting. Otherwise, it will hit and trial if you actually do on a patient and it can be traumatic to the patient as well. And that's why a number of complications appear. We are as undergraduate students, we don't know much about implants. But if we want to have much knowledge, we should be practicing on it. So I would say, yes, virtual reality combined with dentistry should be incorporated at this point. I think that the reason we do a lot of the things we do, especially in a humanitarian realm, is because we believe that we're all a part of the same class. We're all a part of humanity. We're all in it together. What would be cool is to be able to bring up people's income. But what would be great is to really improve the lives of many, many people. If we can improve one person to make them a better person, not just in the sense of economics, but in just their moral character and who they are, that's, that's meaningful and that will last into perpetuity, right? So the reason we're here is because we believe strongly in the blessings that God has given us. And we believe that it is our opportunity and responsibility to then provide that same opportunity and education to other people around the world. So imagine in India, we come back a century from now and the stuff that we've imparted has actually made a community more interested in investing in themselves and their community. And we bring up that whole community. It's a little audacious but it's the right kind of uh, place to be putting our best efforts. I think in the end, this is a first step for us as a foundation and helping us provide a system and a structure whereby we can take education in all different forms of medical research, medical technology, surgical techniques, and teach people all over the world. I would see in the next two or three years, we are able to set up a base here, so we have sufficient bodies who are trained in it, and then we have content which seamlessly 
flows back and forth so that we engage with the faculty and then we are developing this content which is country specific and helps the delivery of content as well as learning which occurs here. So a large part of the reason why we are here in India is because of John Huntsman Sr. and he encouraged us about three years ago to create a foundation. His vision to take the gifts that God has given him, the blessings that he had in his life and bless the lives of people all around him is really disseminated within our foundation as well. That is our mindset, is to help other people. So we hope that this is a stepping stone into something much more robust, much more prolonged to not only bless the people here in India, but eventually all over the world as we attempt to change the way medical humanitarianism is delivered around the world.